Hi everyone. Today's video is about ant colony optimization algorithm. The idea of the algorithm is inspired by the behavior of an ant colony, finding a path to food that is close to optimal. Let's also go through the famous traveling salesman problem. The researchers have long been interested in how ants, with their tiny brain, manage to build good roots. And the essence of the algorithm is very simple. Ants begin to move along all the roots, delivering food to the anthill. Along the way, they leave an odorous trail of pheromones. On a shorter path, ants will go back and forth more times over the same period, and as a result, they will leave more pheromones on every centimeter of the path. This path will smell stronger and attract ants. Over time, all the ants will switch to a stronger smelling shortcut. And the long path will be abandoned, as pheromones evaporate. The first version of the algorithm was suggested by Marco Dorigo in 1992. It was aimed at finding the optimal path in the graph. Actually, with the help of this algorithm, the problems, represented as a graph aimed at finding the optimal path in it are solved. It is usually about transport logistics or network technologies. First, let's analyze the traveling salesman problem. There are different task setting approaches. We will consider the following option. Let's say that there are five cities, and we are in the city A. We need to find the shortest route by going through all the cities once and return to the initial city. In the beginning, we have a choice of four cities. We have chosen one of the options, now we need to choose from three remaining cities. We make a choice. At the moment, the route options are, 4 times 3 equals 12. Now we need to choose from two cities. Development options are, 4 times 3 times 2 equals 24. And then, there's only one option. The number of options is the factorial of the number of cities minus 1. Here, the small end means the number of cities. Since our problem is symmetrical and the root is closed, the result must be divided by 2 since the roots are equivalent. The number of options increases rapidly with the increase in the number of cities, and for 66 cities and more, the problem, in practice, cannot be solved using brute force search. But in many cases, a person can instantly solve this problem, and here is an example. The algorithm, by the way, tries other options. This is the cardinal difference. This is how the cities are approximately located in one of the articles on traveling salesman problem. The example is clearly not the best, since it does not show the complexity of the task. Things get a little more complicated when the points connecting the route are located more or less evenly. But even in this case, a person, by simply following common sense, finds a solution within 5%, maximum 10% of the best solutions. In fact, from a huge number of options, these are immediately excluded. Let's connect 30 cities by ourselves. Firstly, you shouldn't arrange everything so that you will then have to make a long jump to the starting city. The route should be like this. We are trying to move to the nearest cities. If we go here, we will have to take a long jump to return to these cities, so we add them at once. Also, don't forget to include these cities. Next, you can go either this way or this way. Let's go with the option 2. My path turned out to be 6842 pixels. And now let's see the results of the ant algorithm. The green substance represents pheromone paths, I poured lots of it here. At iteration 16, the algorithm outperformed me. At 283 iterations, it found an even shorter path. And one more improvement for 372 iterations. Our path turned out to be longer by a little more than 3%. Not a bad result, given that I only had one iteration. However, a person needs to visually see the cost of moving from one node to another and the roads may not be straight and of different quality. The workaround may be shorter than the direct way. Roads can have different costs in different directions, meaning that the problem becomes asymmetric. And the person here is taken down. But the algorithm doesn't pay attention to this, since it works with a table instead of a picture. And we begin to crack the classic ant colony optimization algorithm. The first formula is the probability of an ant moving from one city to another. These formulas are taken from different sources, yet they describe the same thing. Let's pick this one. This ant number can be removed to avoid distraction. Let's change the scale of the elements a little. The formula determines the probability that the ant will move from I vertus to J vertus. This fragment of the formula describes the desire of the ant to move from I vertus to J vertus. Alpha and beta are constants selected empirically. 
Later, I will show in more detail what they are needed for. Let's say they are equal to 1 and accordingly, they disappear. The first symbol is the amount of pheromones between I city and J city. The second symbol is the reciprocal of the distance between I city and J city. We just divide some constant by the distance between the cities. You can call it proximity. That is, the probability of choosing a city is proportional to the proximity of the city and the amount of pheromones on the way to it. So, the probability of going from I vertus to J vertus equals the desire to go there, divided by the sum of desires of an ant to move from I vertus to all vertices available, meaning all the cities that have not yet been visited. Let's have a look at an example. The ant is at vertice 0. It can go to vertice 1, the desire to go there equals A. It can also go to vertice 2, the desire to do so equals B. And for vertice 3, the desire equals C. To calculate the probability of going to vertice 1, we take the desire to go there and divide it by the sum of all desires. And once again, for those who haven't understood, this is the probability that the ant will move from vertice 0 to vertice 1. And this probability is the desire to go there divided by the sum of all desires to go to all available vertices. In exactly the same way, we calculate the probability of moving to vertice 2 and vertice 3. If we add up all these probabilities, we end up with 1. Actually, this formula serves to ensure that the sum of all probabilities is equal to 1. Let's assume that we have calculated all the probabilities and we lay them out on a number line. We launch a random number generator, which generates a real number from 0 to 1 for us. The result will show which city we will move to. Let's say, we have generated 0 0.47, so we will go to the city 2. Now let's analyze the second formula. It describes the distribution of pheromones across the paths. I would like to note that pheromones are distributed post factum, when all the ants have made their route. These are formulas from different sources. Let's check out this one. The symbol K is the index of an ant. In many examples, it is written as if it were to be raised to a power. This was done on purpose so that only strong-willed people could touch the secret knowledge. The symbol T is the iteration number. Here, it looks like multiplication. I'll scale it so it doesn't distract us. The pheromone addition that the ant K makes on the root between I city and J city at iteration T is equal to some constant Q divided by the length of the root traveled by the ant K provided that this path between I city and J city is in line with the root of the ant. If it's not, there's no addition. The amount of pheromones on the root between I city and J city in the new iteration is equal to the amount of pheromones in the previous iteration multiplied by the evaporation coefficient. Pheromones are constantly evaporating. And to the result obtained, we need to add the sum of all new portions of the pheromones that all the ants have left in this area. We could include the amount of pheromones remaining after evaporation in the constant and multiply it by the amount of pheromones, which is done by one out of four authors. The rest of them have done it in a strange way, keeping the amount of the evaporated pheromones in the constant. That's the reason why they have to do unnecessary actions in the formula, subtracting a constant from one. I will explain all this without formulas. We have four cities, the distance between them is 10, except for city 0 and city 2. In there, the distance is 17. The first ant has traveled this route. Let's write it down. The root length is 47. Here comes the second ant, and the length of the root is also 47. And here is the root of the last ant, with the length equal to 40. Let's suppose that there were 0.5 pheromones on each path, and after evaporation, 64% of pheromones remain. We have to multiply the pheromone on all the path by 0.64. And now we have 0.32 pheromones per path. I have made the constant Q from the formula equal to 4. The length of the first root is 47, so we divide 4 by 47 and get 0.085. This is the number of pheromones left on each path along the root. The second root has the same length, and 0.085 pheromones will be left on each path. The third root has a length of 40. 4 divided by 40 is 0.1. 
Since this route is shorter, more pheromones will be left on each of its paths. Here is an updated map of the pheromone. From city 1 to all other cities, the distance equals 10, but two paths smell better. So, the ants will walk on them more often, thereby further increasing the difference in the amount of pheromones. And now we will analyze all this by using a practical example. Alpha and beta are still equal to 1. This is a table of proximity between the cities and the amount of pheromones on the paths. Since our task is symmetrical, I display only half of the table. Initially, I left 0.2 pheromones on each path, as marked in green in the table. Now I will arrange the cities, and the table will be filled. The distance from city 0 to city 1 is 327 pixels, and from city 0 to city 2, 664 pixels. To determine the proximity, I use the constant 200 so that the numbers are not too small. I'm recording the results obtained in the table. City 1 is about twice as close to the initial one as city 2. We have arranged 10 cities, and the whole table is filled in. The green lines between the cities are pheromones. Now the current city is city 0, where the ant is located. In the table you can see the amount of pheromones and the proximity from city 0 to all the other cities. Let's calculate the desire to move from city 0 to each of the other available cities by multiplying the amount of pheromones in alpha power by the proximity to the given city in beta power. Now, to find out the probability of moving from city 0 to city 1, we divide the desire to go to city 1 by the sum of all desires. It turns out 0.156, and we write it down here, above the city. The desire to move to city 2 is divided by the sum of all desires. We write down the result over city 2. And we do the same for all other cities. Below the city, the amount of pheromones between this city and the current one is indicated. And on top you can find the probability of the ant moving to the city from the current one. The sum of all probabilities equals 1. Also, the probability is depicted on the numerical scale used to select the next city. In the meantime, I will show how altering alpha and beta constants affects the probability of choice. We will do this using beta constant as an example. This is the power to which proximity between the cities is raised. Beta constant is now equal to 1. We will start decreasing it to 0. Watch how the proportions on the numerical scale are changing. When we got to 0, the ants generally paying any attention to the distance between the cities, guided only by pheromones. And at the moment, we have the same amount of pheromones everywhere, so the probability of choice is the same for all cities. Let's increase beta to 4 and watch the numerical scale. City 1 is twice as close to city 0 as city 2, but since we end up raising the proximity to the fourth power, the probability of going to city 1 becomes 16 times higher than to city 2. That is, beta constant determines how strongly, when choosing the next city, the ant is guided by its proximity. With beta equal to 0, the ant does not pay attention to proximity. As beta increases, the proximity value has a stronger effect on the choice of the next city. The same is true for alpha constant, which controls how much the amount of pheromones on the paths influences the ant's choice. Let's generate a random number. We got 0.783. The number points to city 3, so there we go. Now the city 3 is the current one, this is where the ant is located, so we recalculate all the probabilities related to city 3. With a probability of 2 thirds, we move to city 7. We generate a random number, and we move on to city 7. The number of allowed cities is getting smaller, since you can't return to the city where you have already been. We also see a decrease in the number of sectors on the numerical scale. There is only one city left. The probability of moving there is equal to 1. We generate a random number. And that's the city we get. We are done with the first ant. It traveled a closed route that you can see here. Its length is 2901 pixels. The next ant will go from another city, and now I will try to explain why. There are several cities. Let's say we always start from the city A. The city B is in distance. Due to its remote location, when building new routes, the city B is more likely to be selected last. In case of most routes, the following sequence will appear, the city B, the city A. 
That's not good. In our task, the route is closed, you can start from any city, and starting from different cities, we will avoid this obsessive sequence, the city B, the city A. We continue to launch ants, each time from a new city. How many ants are there in total? This is a parameter that you need to choose yourself. It is generally recommended that the number of ants be equal to the number of cities. Of course, there are no ants here. We execute the same algorithm many times. And the number of ants means after how many passes we will need to update the pheromone. So, we have 10 ants, each of them has created its own route, we came to the final point. At the next step, the iteration will end. The pheromone value on the paths has been updated, and a new iteration begins. Now the choice of an ant is influenced not only by the proximity of the city, but also by the experience of previous iterations, preserved as the amount of pheromones on the paths. Evaporation of pheromone and constant Q, regulating the amount of deposited pheromones. Requires selection by experience, tailored to a specific task. For iterations have passed, and looking at the pheromone paths, it is already clear where the search is taking place. Ants will now do iteration after iteration. They won't all follow the same route due to probabilistic choice. But their new routes will be based on the shortest ones they will find. And will track the shortest route they have found. Actually, that's it. I have described the basic algorithm, but over time, many modifications have appeared, greatly improving it. I will describe only a few of them. Elitist ants system. Elite ants are added to regular ones. They only follow the best route found since the beginning of the algorithm. Simply put, the best route gets a little extra pheromone every time. Maxman ants system. Limits are added to the maximum and minimum amount of pheromones on the path. This expands the search field. Pheromones are left only on the best routes. Rank-based ant system. The shorter the route found by an ant during the iteration, the higher the rank is assigned to it. The amount of pheromones is multiplied by the rank of the ant, so even if the routes are almost the same, the shorter one will receive noticeably more pheromones. Ants with a low rank do not leave pheromones. Well, now this is what I've got. We will solve a task with 66 cities, which cannot be solved by enumeration using all computers in billions of years. My idea was to explain the algorithm, so I haven't been playing with the parameters for a long time and, most likely, these parameters are not the most ideal. On this map, you can see that the shortest route I have found is 7372. Now the algorithm has reached it in 588 iterations. Perhaps this is the shortest route on this map, or maybe not. Let's run it once again. The algorithm does not always arrive at this solution in the given time, but the routes found differ by only a few pixels. The algorithm is simple, but its application requires understanding its operation and adjusting multiple parameters. I tried to make the best visual description of the algorithm. I hope I have succeeded. Thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon. More support, more opportunities for new projects. Well, that's all. Bye everyone.